que nous attendons. The vote was a foregone conclusion. Some sections of the left here had said they would boycott it, but it was impossible to find anyone in the lower house of the French Parliament who would say publicly that the ban was a bad thing. Watching from a distance is Karima. This will mean that she will either be fined or more likely have to take a class in citizenship if she dares to challenge the law by wearing the veil in public. It's already really hard for us to wear the facial veil here. People spit on us, call us names. It is really hard, but as soon as I'm fined by the police, I will hire a lawyer and fight this law in a French or the European Court of Human Rights. I want it annulled. Too bad, say her many critics. The veil is, to some here, an attack on France's secular tradition, to others an attack on women's rights, and no doubt to others still wearing the veil carries an implied threat do you have something to hide under your robes? Notional ideas of religious freedom don't stand a chance. Few people said you are going to victimize a, a minority. I'm sorry, I am the victim because those people refuse me so I can see their face, you see? And I think this is very dangerous. It goes without saying that there are questions as to whether France has more important things to worry about than what a couple of thousand women choose to wear and there are bound to be legal challenges about human rights. Many say President Sarkozy is playing to the crowd to get votes. Whatever, France has now laid down a marker for Europe to consider. Spain and Italy may well be next. Whatever the rights and wrongs about religious freedom and human rights, it now appears that large chunks of Europe are coming out against what they see as the unacceptable face of Islam. What will people like Karima do? France doesn't want to understand her, and if she wants to stay here, she will have to put a brave face on things. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, in Paris.